Good morning, everybody. Ivan here. Welcome in. Hope you're having a great day. It is nine o'clock. It is time for class. Time for my live class program for the day. I want to welcome you in. I'm looking forward to having a great uh, experience with you here today. I'm looking forward to sharing some great information with you here today. I want to pull up the Facebook feed, of course, on my laptop so that I can uh, keep an eye on comments and know that you're there and know that you're with me, checking in, and hopefully enjoying and using the program. Welcome, Ivan here. Uh, today is Tuesday, and today's topic is shaving. We're going to talk about the business of shaving and a little bit of tech because we want to get a little techy, so we have our shaving friend right here uh, who's going to be a part of the conversation with us uh, through that conversation. But we're going to get into first a little bit of the business of shaving and then the technology associated with shaving. So as always, where do we start? We go to the book. We go to be a $100,000 hair cutter. You guys know that being a $100,000 hair cutter it's not a one-time thing. It's not a one-day thing. That's why we talk about it every single time we do a class. That's why we talk about it every single day as we gather, because that's how the book works. The book is that daily devotional to success in our business. Keep it on your night table. Wake up in the morning. Turn to today and read today today. And that's what we do. Every class, the first thing we do is we go to today and we read today. Today is June 9. And this one, interestingly, timely, I wrote it in the book about two years ago, and it's ever so much more so important today because the world continues to change, and some things that have always been important will always be important. Some things that have been important become more important, and some things may fall off our focus based on the realities of the circumstances in which we find ourselves. June 9, day 160 with 205 days remaining in the year. Reset your station. A haircut should be staged and executed like a NASCAR race pit stop. Every tool should have a place. You should be able to reach for a clipper, a comb, or any other item almost without looking. You guys don't see it here, but my countertop, my table in front of me that I do these classes from, is pretty organized. I have books. I have tech supplies, I have products, I have tools. It's all laid out in a certain way. And when I get done with a class, I reset the whole counter. I make sure everything's put back where it goes so that next time everything is where I know where it is. There's no stumbling or fumbling. When you see me reach over for something, I know what I'm going for and I know where it is. Same thing with our shops, same thing with our salons, same thing with our station. Every item should be put back in its proper location. All should be ready to go for the next client. Now, post-corona virus lockdown in the world in which we live, this hyper-focus on sanitation and infection control has become a part of our business lives. It always was supposed to be a part of our business lives, but it's even more so much a part of our business lives today. And I think resetting your station is part of those habits. You guys have all seen the meme online. You guys have all seen the photos on Instagram of the barber stations where they say Instagram and reality. You know, these barbers are taking pictures of their station and it's all laid out nice and pretty. And the reality is it's all just a jumble of junk. We know how that happens out there. We know that as you're working, you're picking up and putting down. It's about habits. It's about organization. Um, I think a lot of guys, specifically, that come from a background of maybe working on cars tend to be a little more organized in this regard. You kind of keep your tools laid out as they are. Women and men who cook, people who love being in the kitchen know that there's a way in which you execute what you do in a kitchen. There's a ballet, if you will, of how, you know, things are in drawers and you reach and you do, and it's the efficiency. And I think that's a huge piece of what today's tip is. So that's the tip of the day for today for June 9. It's reset your station. It's that idea of working in an organized fashion so that you can be clean, neat, and super, super crazy productive. And clean and neat obviously comes into conversation when we start talking about shaving. 
So let's get into today's topic. Let's get into the subject of shaving. Let's start out by saying in the current business environment in which we find ourselves, the recommendation in almost most cases is that we not be performing facial hair services. Just take it off the menu. Right now, we shouldn't be doing this. We shouldn't be shaving clients' faces. We shouldn't be doing beard trims. We shouldn't be serving a client that's not wearing a mask. That's the world in which we live. It is what it is. We accept it. We move on. We'll get back to it. You know, I was thinking when I laid out my schedule for this week, should I even be doing a shave class? Should I even be talking about shaving right now? Because we can't be doing it. And the answer is, yeah, I left it on the schedule. We still need to be talking about it. We still need to be understanding. And this is why the class wasn't just shaving. This is not just a how to shave. This is why the class is gonna be the business of shaving and actual shaving. And the reason for that is, now is the time to plan. Many of you know, many of you have been watching the videos. Today is June 9. We are 22 days away from July 1, Raise Your Haircut Prices Day in the USA. That is our haircutter holiday. That is an event we will all celebrate together. And it's a very important annual event on the calendar. I spend June every month talking every day. I'm posting a new video every single day on the subject of price increases. All of the dynamics, all of the considerations, all of the factors to be factored in when making these price increase decisions. So we're talking about it even though we're not doing it yet. I'm going to put shaving in that same bucket. Even though we're not doing it yet, there's never been a better time to plan. There's never been a better time to gain a solid understanding of both the business dynamics of shaving and the technical execution of those shave services. So yes, correct, right now we're not shaving. But yes, correct, right now we are planning and I will help you plan. First, let's talk about pricing and timing. And this has been a issue about which I've become very outspoken as shaving has returned in popularity. Pre-corona, we were seeing more shaving being done in barber shops than at any time in recent history. Shaving has experienced a phenomenal and a substantial resurgence in its popularity as a barber shop and beauty barber slash professional service. A uh, lot of heat, light, and energy. A lot of interest in shaving. And very early on, when shaving started to become popular again, I got out in front of the conversation about the economics of shaving. And what I mean is this. If it takes you 20 minutes to do a haircut, and I love that number because I believe all talented haircutters should be able to produce a quality haircut and a quality customer service experience at 3.0 haircuts per hour. 3.0 haircuts per hour, that's 20 minutes per haircut. I believe we all, no matter who we are and no matter who we cut, should be able to deliver a quality technical service and a quality personal experience in 20. So let's just say you can, 20 minutes. And let's say your haircut is $20. We're looking at a dollar a minute. You're with me on this so far? And I'm using these numbers because they're easy for math. I'm not using these numbers because I'm advocating a particular price for a haircut or a shave. But if you do three haircuts an hour, you do a haircut in 20 minutes and you charge $20, your productivity is a dollar an hour. However, if that same barber in that same shop offers a shave service for $20, and it takes a half an hour, you just saw where I'm going. You have now lost 50, or actually a third of your productivity. Instead of generating a dollar an hour, you're now generating $20 in 30 minutes. Your productivity has dropped. In an hour, you can do two shaves for $40, or you can do three haircuts for 60. That is a loss of 33% of your revenue. This brings up the important piece of the shaving conversation 
about pricing and timing. Pricing and timing. Many times when you walk into barbershops and you look at a menu, a shave and a haircut are the same price. 20 bucks, 20 bucks. Tragically, occasionally, you will also see a hair cutter who offers a discount if you purchase both services. Shave, 20 bucks. Haircut, 20 bucks. Shave and a haircut, 35. Don't do it. Don't do it. That's a no-no. You're giving money away. You're undermining your productivity. So what I tell people is, if you can do a haircut in 20 minutes for $20, but instead you do a shave in 30 minutes for $20, the shave has not earned you $20. The shave has cost you or lost you 10 bucks. Does anybody see the difference there? Everybody see what's going on there? Those extra 10 minutes, were they used for a haircut, would have generated 10 more dollars. But since your shave timing and procedure was slower, it cost you money to shave. You're not making money to shave, you're making money. But the value of your time and your productive capacity, your productive capability has been undermined by the time price balance of your services. So what's a barber to do? What's a hair cutter to do? It's easy. You need to price your services based on a reasonable expectation of their timing and of your productivity. So in this conversation, a haircut should be $20. And in this conversation, the shave should be priced at 30. It throws the proportions off. You're charging more for that shave and you shouldn't discount if a customer is buying one of each. It should just be a la carte straight pricing. But this creates parity in not the price of the services, but the value of the experience for the customer, and it creates parity in the value of the experience for you, the service producer. Does that make sense? Throw me a thumb, some love, some hearts, whatever you do, if that concept, as I laid it out right there, made sense to you. About pricing, relative to your timing, relative to the experience. Now, this does bring up the notion that we then, as service providers, have an obligation to create a truly valued experience. And let's face it, one of the things I talk about with shaving is, if you are purchasing a shave for the purpose of removing the hair from your face, there are better ways to do it. Because of modern razor blades, because of modern shave care products, and a variety of other circumstances and, and issues, a guy in his bathroom at home, for all practical purposes, can do a better job of removing hair from his face than a barber can with a straight razor. Let's be honest. Let's not be so full of ourselves. Let's understand the realities of shaving. If the purpose of shaving is to take the hair off your face, you can do that at home. You can do that pretty well at home. You can buy a quality shave cream from me. You can buy a quality uh, skincare after buzz, after shave product from me, and you can go home and do a fabulous job. If the purpose is getting the hair off your face. But I would argue that the purpose of a barbershop shave is very different and runs much deeper than getting the hair off your face. It's about the experience. It's about the service. It's about the atmosphere. It's about barbershop culture. It's about tradition. It's about the sights and the sounds and the smells of a barbershop shave. A barbershop shave is about much, much more than getting the hair off your face. And as a result, we have an opportunity to deliver this differently and to charge for this differently. It's not just a service function. Rotating your tires 
at the auto shop is about getting the back tires to the front and getting the front tires to the back. That's rotating your tires. I think it would be very difficult for an auto shop to make tire rotation an experience, a celebration, a moment and an opportunity of community. Come on, that's silly. However, a barbershop shave can be all of those things and more. So what I'm explaining there is not only what we need to do with regards to delivering that shave service, but I'm also laying the groundwork for creating a price that fits that experience, creating a price certainly north of a haircut and certainly worthwhile. Now the next thing I want to talk about with regards to the business side of shaving is what I believe is a powerful opportunity while we're talking about the experience and while we're talking about the price, I want to talk about the product. I want to talk about the products that we use. This is what I call my ultimate barbershop shave kit. It is my shave oil, pre-shave foundation oil, my shave cream, and my aftershave product. It's these three pieces. These are what I use in the shop to shave. And I think it's important that we discuss that you never use anything on a client ever in conjunction with the delivery of a service. We never use anything on a client ever that is not available for purchase at the front of the store. And this is especially true with shaving. The shave oil that we use and recommend, the shave cream that we use and recommend, and the after product that we use and recommend. We use them and we have them available for purchase at the front of the store. Fundamentally important. It's part of the experience. But the next thing I want to talk about is the idea of building the product into the service. Because shaving is a little different from a haircut. If I come in and buy a haircut, I will buy a haircut. And I will come back and buy another haircut. And if I like you and if you're good and if I'm happy and I'm satisfied, I will come back and buy another haircut. And I will come back and buy another haircut. But it is very possible that there are many shave customers who will not do all of their shaving with you. They might get a shave service from you. They might shave at home on their own three or four or five or six or seven times. And then they might come back and buy another shave from you. Or they might go a whole month or two. Or they might come back only twice a week. But in between receiving a shave from you, in a lot of cases, there are a lot of clients that are going to be shaving at home. What an incredible opportunity for us to maximize our profits, to maximize our sales, to maximize the experience, and to maximize the value to our customers by building the product kit into the service. Instead of a haircut 20 and a shave being 30, make the haircut 20 and make the shave 60. Yeah, that's right, you heard me say it, 60. And include the ultimate shave kit in the price. Don't make it an option, build it right into the price and you explain to the customer, I'm gonna deliver this world-class shave experience for you and I'm going to send you home with the things you need to replicate the experience every single day on your own. Powerful, profitable, successful. They're gonna use the products, they're gonna repeat on the products, even if they don't ever buy another shave from you again, they may come back and buy more product because they're gonna know the products, they're gonna like the products, they will have enjoyed the products, and they will believe in the products. This is a powerful opportunity, building it in. It serves as a sampling opportunity, because the customer gets to take the product home and use it, and the customer will talk about it with family and friends. It's also important when we mention sampling, the idea of giving away some shave services, sampling out your shave services to key customers to what you determine to be influencers. 
We know who these guys are. These are guys that talk. They talk us up. They send referrals. They promote our business for us. What a perfect guy to say, hey, buddy, when you get your haircut next time, I'm going to give you a shave. No charge. It's on me. I'm going to give you some products to take home. No charge. They're on me. And you don't even have to ask them to talk it up. Just give it away. Because when you give it away like that, trust me, it will come back. So sampling shave services to the appropriate individuals who you deem to be influencers. Of course, when we do that, when we send them home with product, we're going to send them home with cards. That's what we do. We know that from other conversations we've had because influencers go out and what do they do? They influence. Let them do their jobs. All right. That's a little bit about what I wanted to share about the business side of shaving. My only last final comment on the business side of shaving is the notion or the idea of becoming a specialist. I really think if shaving is something you're going to do, and shaving is something you're going to enjoy doing, and shaving is something that you're going to endeavor to do in a very, very profitable way, meaning you're going to deliver the service in a quality manner, you're going to price it in a reality-based framework so that it is extremely lucrative for you, I believe there's a huge niche opportunity out there for somebody that wants to focus here. I have seen specifically, oddly, not oddly, but it is what it is, I've seen in the last several years a number of women, of female beauty and barber professionals, who have chosen to position themselves as facial hair and beard specialists. And for lack of a better way to put it, the ladies that do this, they rock this. They just traffic. They just line up the clients. Because I think in some ways it's considered to be novel or unique. A female who, yeah, sure, she's a barber. I don't have any problem with female barbers. Never have. Um, but she also specializes in facial hair and beards. Guys go nuts for that. Guys dig that. Guys line up for that. So it's the notion of finding your specialty. And, and I guess my, my reason for mentioning that is don't let gender, if you're a female professional listening to me talk about this, don't let gender be perceived as a roadblock, a stumbling block, or an impediment to your pursuing this category because in some cases, as a female, gender may play significantly to your advantage. All right, let's talk a little bit about shaving. Let's get into shaving. And I'm gonna get my model out, I'm gonna get some tools out, and we're gonna talk about the technical side of a little bit of shaving. I've got my mannequin marked up with our standard uh, shave procedure with our standard stroke pattern. Um, you guys should be fairly familiar with this. I have the proportions off by a little bit, but faces are off by a little bit. Every face is going to be a little bit different. So where those lines draw, where those sections or stroke pattern areas delineate, it can be a little different from client to client and from person to person. Now I want to set you guys up for success with my favorite shaving tool. And this is it guys. This is what I use. This is the wire wrapped nape and body razor. It features the individual blades that carry the micro fine wire wrapping over the top surface of the blade so that they will not cut a client. So that they are much less dangerous. And by the way, by virtue of that wire wrapping, that wire wrapping is the loophole in the law that allows cosmetology professionals to use these tools in almost all states, that allows you to deliver the service with this tool in a very safe, professional manner. Now, of course, every blade gets changed every customer in the sharps bin. Brand new blade for each and every customer. The blades come in a 10-pack. They look like this. 
The blades come in their no-touch tray. And we'll swap the blade just so you see what it looks like. You press the ejector button out. You take the blade away. You pick up the tray. And you pick up a new blade. Notice I didn't even touch that blade. You take it right out of the tray. Now I can put that one back. I don't want to waste a perfectly good blade because we're not using a human client. We've got a mannequin up here. And I can put this blade back in the handle. But I've got these online. They're available on the website, ivanzoot.com. You've got the razor with one blade and a 10-pack of blades right there. Very inexpensive. Basically, the cost of one shave service literally puts you in the business. Now, proper holding of a razor. Live long and prosper. Star Trek. That's it right there. Set up your hand like that. Right-handed hair cutter, it's your right hand. Put that handle in right there between two fingers, two fingers. Turn it over. That's your proper shave position for your razor. Got the handle coming up between the two. You got your thumb underneath the blade on the shank. You've got your finger on the finger rest and you're good to go. This will give you complete control. This will allow you the comfort of proper stroke procedure. This will allow you to come in and shave properly. Reverse and pressure. All right, so that's your handhold position for your razor. Now, let's talk about prep. I want to share the products that I use and the prep pattern that I use. I'm a big believer in hot lather, in steam towels, in the experiential side of what we do. First thing we do is we lather with hot lather. Now I love hot lather, but I hate hot lather. I love hot lather for the scent and the feel and the smell. I hate hot lather machines because they leak and they're nasty. I hate hot lather soap because it's drying. It's, it's highly alkaline. It's not good for your skin but it's the experience. So I use hot lather. A lot of times in classes I demo with a cheapy can of Barbasol, not because I would use this in the shop, but because I demo with it. So you're taking hot lather and you're applying it to the client. Now as soon as you apply hot lather to a client, they begin to ooh and they begin to ah and they begin to make all those noises about what a wonderful experience this is. This is one indication that you know you're doing it right. You're getting that feedback from the client. Now, please understand, this is not skin on a real client. And this is not real hot lather. I'm just mocking it up and playing you along here. But what's important is the idea that we are using hot lather for the experience. Hot lather violates the rule that Ivan sets up that you don't use anything on a client that's not available for purchase. But we use hot lather for the experience. Then we go to our towel cabinet, we get a steam towel. Now, proper steam towel. If you're using a cabinet, I fold my towel in a third and a third again. So it's one long sixth, or one long third really. Then I fold it in half so it's a sixth, and then I roll. Usually I roll the other way. Usually I roll open end to closed end. It would look like this. That gives me a nice tight roll on my towel. Now this is a regular terry towel. It's a little thicker than what I use as a shave towel, but it's what I have available. That goes in the towel cabinet. That comes out of the towel cabinet nice and hot and steamy. We're going to unroll it. I unroll it that far. I regulate the temperature to drop it, cool it a little bit, and then I apply that to the client. Now this is not a client, and this is not a steam towel. Again, we're mocking it up. I'm going to move him in a little closer here. If you don't have a towel cabinet, you can create steam towels using hot water running from the sink. But at this point, his eyes are closed. He's laying back. He's relaxed. 
He's quiet. He's calm. He's comfortable. He's enjoying this process. I leave that steam towel on while I prep my razor, while I get my razor prepped and in place and ready to go. Then I use that steam towel to remove the hot lather, to remove the hot lather. It's important to recognize that the shave cream companies have been lying to customers for many, many years. Anytime you ever see the Gillette commercial with the guy hacking through a forest of foam, we don't do that. Professional barbers, professional razor wielders, professional shavers never shave skin we cannot see. So here's the process. Hot lather, warm towel, oil. This is my foundation. Drop of oil in my hand. This is my pre-shave oil and beard oil. I apply this oil to the area that I am going to shave to lay down a foundation. Softens the hair, lubricates the skin, smells super nice, feels really good, preps us for a beautiful shave. I tell the client what it is. I tell the client what it does. And I tell the client why I am choosing to use it for them. That is product number one, shave oil. Then I go to product number two, shave cream. Now my rule is you don't ever use a shave cream that you do not have available for purchase at the front of the store. I'll say that again. You do not ever use a shave cream that you do not have available for purchase at the front of the store. This is fundamentally important. I'll hook you up with these products. Reach out to me. I'll get you uh, products. I'll get you a sample try me kit of the three of them. I'll get you wholesale prices on these. We can ship them to you. You can mark them up. You can use them. You can sell them. You can make huge money. People ask me all the time about getting into the product end of our business. There's no better way to start your journey into product sales than with this three-piece shave experience set. So we apply our shave cream. Use what you like. Mine specifically is very concentrated. You don't use very much. Mine specifically is a... Uh, a low lather formula. It doesn't foam up heavy. It doesn't get all white so you can't see through it. Hang on, I gotta grab my water bottle. Okay, I'm back. I didn't go anywhere. I just had to grab my water bottle. I'm going to put a little bit of water on here because we don't have a human face, so we're going to kind of um, mop this a little bit. But you'll notice we're not going to lather up super white. We're going to apply the shave product that we have available for purchase at the front of the store. This is almost going to be like a shave gel. It's a cream-based product, but like a gel, it stays clear, it stays wet, it stays soft, it stays uh, very, very visible. So we're getting this guy ready to shave. I applied my shave oil. I have a water-based shave cream that I applied on top of that. Now it's time to shave. And what's important to recognize about the shave procedure that I'm gonna share with you guys, and I need a towel. Normally a client would have a towel on their shoulders, but because we're using a mannequin, we don't have shoulders. So I'm just gonna put a towel around here because I need access to a towel as though it was a towel on the client's neck. Now it's time to go in with our shave procedure. I've got my razor in my hand. I want you to think of shaving not as shaving. I want you to think of shaving as wiping. What we're going to be doing in our shave service is not so much shaving hair off of our client, but wiping four times. One, two, three, four. Watch the procedure now. This is proper professional shaving. We're gonna work in uh, stroke zone one, two, and three. We're gonna come in with our thumb. We're gonna wipe away the shave cream with our thumb. That's wipe number one. 
Wipe number two, I wipe the shave cream on the towel. Use my thumb to get it off the client, use my towel to get it off my thumb. <clears throat> That's wipe one, wipe two. I'm reading the surface, I'm feeling the surface, I'm measuring skin tension, I'm looking for moles, bumps, irregularities and things like that. Wipe number one, wipe number two. Wipe number three is here. I put tension on the skin with my thumb, I come in and apply tension to the client's skin with my thumb, and I wipe away the hair in zone one. And that's three wipes. Here's number four. I wipe the razor on the towel to wipe the shave cream and the hair off the blade. Wipe one, wipe two, wipe three, wipe four. Now I come into zone two. I put my thumb, I wipe away the shave cream, I wipe it on the towel. I place my thumb on the skin for tension, and I finish zone two. Some people will do zone two as a reverse like that. I don't really, I'm not a stickler for following stroke pattern every time. I think we adapt stroke patterns sometimes based on where we are on the face and what we need to do. As I said, my proportions here are off. I will sometimes take one almost all the way to the edge of two. I can come in with some tension in two or I can come in with some tension in two. Wipe. Three. Here, here, tension pressure, here, here. That's your four swipes in zone three. Zone four, and again, underneath the neck, we're gonna watch for growth pattern and direction. I will come in and wipe, 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 and zone five. Zone five can be a reverse. I'll sometimes come in underneath, and again, wiping off the shave cream, wiping the shave cream, and shaving. That's your, gonna be your shave procedure. Four wipes. Remove the product, transfer the product, remove the hair, transfer the hair. Wipe, 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 wipe through your shave procedure. Now, after we've completed that full shave, repeat on the opposite side, you know how that works. We're gonna go back to that steam towel again. We're gonna to go to a steam towel a second time. We're gonna pick up a second steam towel. And we're gonna use that second steam towel and roll. We're gonna use that second steam towel out of the cabinet to regulate the temp, to wipe off any leftover shave product from the client. I'm going to clean them up nice. It feels real good. I don't use a cool towel as my second towel. I use a separate warm towel because I'm actually going to cool them off and reduce their temperature and kind of normalize them and bring them back down with a product. I'm going to use After Buzz. Now this is a cool product. It took me 10 years to develop After Buzz from John Amico Professional. That's my product brand and manufacturer. Clipper guy, that's me. This is After Buzz. I use this on the back of the head. I use this on the nape, sideburn area, and I use this on the face. This is an after shaving skincare product. This is reduces redness, reduces irritation, moisturizes, hydrates, prevents ingrown hairs, smells nice, feels good, and it has a wonderful antibacterial and a sanitizing property by virtue of a couple of its key ingredients. So we're gonna massage that in. I might stand behind my client, work that in really, really good. That's after buzz. So we have three pieces to our ultimate shave experience. We have pre-shave, which is our base, softens the hair, lubricates the skin, protects the skin. We have our shave product, and we have our aftercare product. These three pieces make up what I call my ultimate shave experience. You can purchase the three piece set on my website at ivanzoot.com and reach out to me with a direct message for special wholesale prices, special wholesale discounts, special pricing opportunities on it. Because this right here, 
the product is not only the key to delivering the service experience, but the product is also one of the major keys to the bottom line, long-term profitability of the business of the shave business. Now, you've got your business conversation. We had that already. You've got your pricing conversation. We tied in product. We talked about sampling. We talked about influencers. We talked about timing. Then we talked about some of the tools to deliver the service. The Nape Razor with the protected wire wrapped blades. Ivanzoot.com for these. You can buy them separate or you can buy them as a two-piece set like that. We talked about the product for service delivery. We talked about the conversations to have with our clients. We talked about everything you need to know to deliver this service as a qualified, talented, experienced professional. I wanna help you build and grow your business. I wanna help you be that $100,000 hair cutter. We're gonna to close today with a little conversation about 100 by 100. That is 100 new haircut customers in 100 days guaranteed. This is the book that I introduced this year and I introduced it right before the whole world burst into flames with the whole Corona conversation. Now, many of us are back to work already. Many of us are getting back to work very soon. And many of us are finding that we are rebuilding our business. We are rebuilding our professional lives. We are re-evaluating the way in which we flow clients through the shop, the way in which we serve clients and the things that we do. There's never been a better time to double down on the skills and the information you need to help you build and grow your business. This book is hyper-focused on one thing, 100 new haircut customers in 100 days guaranteed. If it doesn't work, I'll give you your money back. I am that confident because you know what? I know that it works. I've done it. You can do it. And I've helped many other haircutting professionals do it too. 100 new haircut customers in 100 days guaranteed. Amazon.com or Ivanzoot.com, paper, digital, or audio. Let me help you build and grow your business. Thank you for joining me here today. Watch this video. Watch it again on replay. Join my online community at patreon.com slash Ivan Zoot, where I'm helping people just like you to become $100,000 haircutters, to gain 100 new haircut customers, and to build a big and bigger busy barbershop business. My job is to help you do it. Let's get busy doing it together. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. We'll see you Tomorrow, we've got another class tomorrow at 9 a.m. Thanks for being here. Bye-bye.